Good morning and welcome to my kitchen. Today we're going to be making my Tuscan herb blend that we'll be using on my Polo al Mattoni. I'll show you that in a minute. So the Tuscan herb blend that we're going to make today, I use my Italian food processor, the Mezzaluna, and we're going to use fine sea salt, sage leaves, rosemary, garlic, and a little chili with black pepper, okay? So you want to remove the sage leaves from the plant, no stems, okay? Tuscan um, Trinity is like rosemary, sage, and garlic with sea salt I use to preserve it. So when you use salt, the salt is going to absorb all the um, essential oils and aromatics in the plants. So we're going to just like make this smaller to start with. Sage, our garlic, the rosemary. I often make this in large proportions, this trinity, rosemary, sage, and garlic. And the salt helps dry it, so that helps me keep it in a jar to use whenever I need it. Now we have sage and rosemary growing in our backyard, so that's no problem. Today, um, I want to make this chicken, so I want it to be a little spicy. We tend to actually use more chili pepper than we do black pepper, so I'm going to add it and leave the seeds in there. And then we have um, black pepper that we can buy in a grinder, which is kind of fun. So I always have fresh ground pepper. Okay. Then we're going to add some fine sea salt. And depending on how moist and wet your uh, herbs are, is how much salt you're going to need. So this is going to help the salt actually become flavored as well. So you want to rock and walk. So at the beginning, I kind of take big steps and chop both ways. You never want to really uh, turn your knife to cut. This is how you get a really good balance. And I have these nice little handles I can just press down on. And as I get good, I can go faster. And this is going to mince everything up together. And if I see that it's really, really wet, I can always add more salt. Usually I add more salt if I'm going to be saving it for later. So if I'm cooking with it just fresh, I don't need to add so much salt. I would just add the salt I need for my recipe. Okay, so see how I keep moving it around and replacing it to get into more angle. You want to be sure to also get off what's sticking to your blade. Okay. So when I'm going to be saving it, I actually take this down to really small uh, pieces, tiny pieces of garlic. Garlic retains a lot of water, and the salt will help also dry the garlic so you'll have, won't get any mold. If you're going to make this and save it, I would keep it laid out on my cutting board for a day and let it dry so that there is no moisture. And again, if I was saving it, I also want to use a little more salt. In the old days, salt was very, very expensive and rare in Florence. It was just for the rich. Add a little more salt here. So that was about two teaspoons of salt. And so our bread is made with no salt. The word salary came from sale, and the expression worth your weight in salt. So the Tuscans found a way to stretch the salt by adding it to the herbs. So when you have these beautiful herb blends often, they're to stretch the salt. It's often like too if you're doing in a, a low salt diet, you can do like a lemon pepper with salt. And that helps you use less salt and have more flavor in your cooking. Okay, this is nice. So what I'm going to do now, I'm still leaving this as a little rustic kind of version because this is going to be roasting on top of my chicken. And let me just show you. I have this special uh, clay dish. Let me just put this here. This is called, this is clay. It goes stovetop. And then it comes with its own weight. Oh, this weighs so much. 
This is the lid. This is made in impruneta while the clay is made. This weighs several pounds, okay? So I have, these are um, what I can buy as boneless, skinless uh, chicken thighs is what I like to use. Traditionally, it's a whole chicken spatchcocked, which means you cut through the backbone and open it like a book. You could do that with a whole small chicken in here. What I'm gonna do is just do a nice kind of sprinkling of these herbs. They usually do this on a barbecue grill with then the bricks on top of it or stones. This works well if you don't have this clay pan in a cast iron skillet with then um, a pot of water on top of it. It'll give you the same effect, okay? So I am also very lucky in that I have a um, another seasoning which I really like, which is wild fennel pollen. Okay, it's, um, I don't know if you can see in here. This is fennel pollen, and I'm gonna add that on here, which is a dust. So right now, growing wild in the fields in the summer, uh, this is September now, the fennel pollen is in season. So we can actually gather this, hang the plants upside down, dry them, and then just shake off the pollen. So if you go to buy this, it's very expensive. But to me, it's almost like a Chanel in the kitchen, Chanel number five, in that a little bit goes a long way. It also is an incredible, incredible flavor. It's almost like kind of the Chinese have the five spice mix. The French have their four, quatre epices, the four, four spices and herbs. Um, it's like a secret blend that makes a dish really magical. So we don't use a lot of ingredients. We don't use more ingredients that we need. But there are certain things that take a dish up another level. Okay, So it has salt, pepper, chili pepper, rosemary, sage, garlic, and my fennel pollen. Now I'm just going to put this on the heat and cook it with this weight on top. Okay, mostly I wanted you to see how to make my Tuscan herb mixture. Bon appetito!